What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host that just witnessed some disturbing behavior in the Among Us chat. Uh, which brings me to my PSA. If you are above the age of 18, don't ask 15 year old girls for their Snapchat or Instagram and say inappropriate things. It weirded me out, it really did. Anyway, uh, today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. And I hope you enjoy. Unless you're that, that creep from Among Us. In which case, then stay away, especially from schools. <laughs> All right, this story's called Boyfriend cheats on me with my step-sibling so I get him kicked out and destroy his relationship with his parents. Hello, Reddit people. I've been wanting to post my story on here for absolutely ages, but I just never got around to doing it. So then I figured, since I have a Reddit account now, I might as well post it. When I was around 17, I started dating a guy who was 19. I'll call him Jake for the sake of this post. Also, age of consent where I live is 16, so nothing illegal happening here. We got on well, spent a lot of time together, and cared for each other a lot. We even started talking about living together once we both moved out. We were a perfectly happy couple, or so I thought. You see, after we'd been dating for a few months, something in Jake changed. Wait, so y'all were dating for a few months and already talking about moving? Okay. He was getting a lot more distant. Whenever he was with me, he'd be checking his phone constantly. We stopped spending as much time together together and he started to get like really funny about public affection regarding things like hand holding and stuff. He also seemed to start caring less and less about my feelings. I used to have a bit of a thing for humiliation in the bedroom. Nothing too far uh, and we'd spoken about what Jake should and shouldn't say but he started to get more and more degrading. He'd tell me how no one would ever love me and would pick on my insecurities. I actually broke down crying a few times when this happened. To give him a bit of credit, the first few times he did stop everything he was doing and apologized and cuddled with me until I felt better. But eventually that stopped too and he just began rolling his eyes and telling me to grow up. He was like a completely different person. The insults started to seep into our everyday life. He'd pick on my appearance a lot, bring up my family. I was dealing with a lot of family issues at the time. Bring up the fact that I slept around before we started dating, a sort of rebellion caused by the family issues, etc. If I got upset by it, he just just leave the room and let me cry by myself. I started to feel like it was my fault our relationship was falling apart. Maybe I just wasn't good enough for him. I knew deep down that he was cheating on me and that was confirmed when I got a message from a guy, David, on Facebook telling me that he'd been sleeping with Jake. He apologized profusely and told me that he broke things off with Jake as soon as he found out he had a boyfriend. I couldn't be mad at David. It wasn't his fault. We spoke for hours and I reassured David that it wasn't his fault and that he'd done nothing wrong. David also helped me to stop making excuses for Jake's attitude and the way he'd been acting. He was a godsend. The thing that truly broke me happened not too long after the cheating was discovered. We'd been arguing a hell of a lot more. Then he decided to do something absolutely unforgivable. You see, I had a stained relationship with my father for years. He'd cheat on my mother constantly and eventually he settled down and had kids with the girl he he'd been seeing behind her back. He did try to have some sort of relationship with me until I was about 13 or 14-ish, and then decided that he didn't love me as much as his other kids, and we stopped any and all contact. It broke me, and it still hurts to think about to this day. Anyway, Jake went out of his way to find one of my step-siblings online and slept with him. He bragged about it the next day, and my step-sibling actually posted online about what had happened, and I received a bunch of messages from their friends telling me how I I had deserved it. This was probably the lowest point in my life, and I hated myself. Partly for allowing it to happen, and partly because I had started to believe what they were saying. My only solace during this time was David. I didn't want to burden my friends with my problems, and David was one of the only people who knew firsthand what Jake was like. We spoke for a few weeks, and eventually talk turned to revenge. I had tried calling things off a couple of months prior due to Jake's awful behavior, but he started with the apologies and telling me he didn't mean it and he'd never do it again. He even spoke to some of my family members who unknowingly pressured me to get back together with him as we were such a sweet couple. I hadn't wanted to tell them the real reason that we'd broken up, so I kept the details pretty vague, though I'm pretty sure some of them had seen my step-siblings post and knew why I didn't want to be with them. After weeks of talking and planning, I had finally had enough and decided to do something about it. My 
father wasn't exactly a rich man, but he worked a pretty well-paying job and earned enough money to live fairly comfortably. He had begun spreading rumors around when I was younger, during a custody battle with my mother, that he had set up a trust fund for me and that there was enough money there to get me set up in my own place when I was 18, plus a bit extra. I knew that this was absolute bullcrap. He tried to get out of paying child support all the time. Of course, he'd never set up a trust fund for me. However, Jake didn't. We'd never spoken about it a lot, but he'd heard the rumors and I'd always just say what I told you folks. My father was an appalling parent who grudged paying my mother child support, so why the hell would he set up a trust fund? But Jake wouldn't listen. He even did his own research into the type of job my father worked and came up with an estimate of how much he thought my father was earning. Though, to his credit, he did drop the subject whenever I asked him to, for a while anyway. I decided to use this to my advantage. Jake and I were still dating, though I avoided him at any chance I got. Until one night where I sat him down and told him that since I'd be turning 18 in a couple of weeks, I'd started thinking about getting us our own place. With the trust fund my father had set up for me, he immediately cheered up at this and honestly, I think that night was the first time in months that he'd said anything nice to me when we weren't in public or with friends and family. This very nearly made me want to call the whole thing off. But I spoke with David later that night and he reminded me that Jake would go back to his usual degrading attitude in no time. We started looking at flats. Though Jake was kind enough to let me have the final say and handle the paperwork. Because how could he possibly go out and cheat on me if he had to sort out the paperwork for a flat? I was a little surprised by this to be very honest as I'd always thought he'd want his name on the paperwork and everything so I couldn't kick him out. But by this point, he'd slept with my step-sibling, degraded me, smashed my self-confidence to pieces, and cheated on me regularly. I think by now, he thought that I wouldn't kick him out no matter what he did. Anyway, I started taking up extra shifts at work to try and save enough money to actually move out. Not with Jake, though. Oh, no. I was moving in with my friend Emma. We had both been thinking about moving out for a while anyway and thought, why not just be roommates? We found a cute little one-bedroom flat that was close to our college and work and started getting stuff sorted to move in. I also didn't want to bring any trouble to my mother's door if Jake started kicking up a fuss. Emma had no issues with clawing the face off him if need be and told me not to worry about him coming to our front door. Then came the next part of the plan. I waited till a week or so before Jake and I were supposedly moving into our own flat and stole his phone for a few minutes. He'd stopped caring about leaving his phone unattended and would sometimes flat out brag about how lucky he was to be able to sleep with whoever he wanted and come home to a little bimbo who'd make him dinner. So that day when he went for a shower, he wasn't all too bothered about taking his phone with him. Perfect. I went onto his phone, deleted my number from his contacts and changed the, and changed the name of his mom's contact as mine. Pleased, I went to the kitchen, smashed one of the plates. It was my mother's, but it was a cheap one from a local shop and I did replace it as possible. I left for work once everything was done. My mother had left for work a couple hours prior, so she was safe. I just needed a reason for him to get pissed off. And whoo boy did he get pissed off. His first reaction was to text me, calling me all of the disgusting names under the sun. Except it wasn't me he texted, it was his mom. I texted her in advance and told her that I'd hope she'd forgive me, but she had to see what her son was really like. She'd never tried to defend him as much as she just had known quite how bad his behavior was. She'd actually called him out a couple of times where he'd slipped up and been harsh with me when she was there. She went eight feces. I never found out exactly how their argument went as she phoned him to scream at him and call him out for his crappy behavior, finally seeing how horrible her son was. It didn't help that she'd been sent screenshots of some of the times or he'd admitted to cheating on me. She was absolutely disgusted by her son's behavior and phoned me to apologize on Jake's behalf. It wasn't her fault though. He's old enough to know how to act like a damn adult. He wound up telling his mom essentially that her opinion didn't matter as he'd be moving in with me anyway. Needless to say, when he called me on Facebook after I deleted my number from his phone, I took some satisfaction in telling him that we weren't moving in together, that the trust fund wasn't real, I'd already told him that in the past, he just refused to listen, and that I'd moved in with Emma. I was called all the sluts and whores under the sun. His voice sort of turned into white noise after a while.
while. I told him we were over and hung up, locked him on everything. He had to run back to his mom and dad, his tail between his legs, and they took him back for a little while. Though after a bit, the arguments became too much, and his parents kicked him out. He stayed with a couple of friends for a few months before he managed to get his own place. His parents, especially his mother, have not been the same with him since. I still talk to his mom on occasion. Lastly, David and I took the liberty of sending screenshots of Jake's abuse to as many of the people he'd been hooking up with as possible. A couple of sleepless nights were spent trying to track down people on Facebook. Part of it was to get back at Jake, but most of it was just to try to make sure that none of them got roped into a full-on relationship with him and had to deal with all the crap I'd gone through. So, there it is. My little story of pro revenge. I know this is really long, so there's a teal deer below. I wasn't ever planning on posting my story, but I was scrolling through Facebook the other day, and one of Jake's new accounts popped up on the people you may know section. After talking with Emma about it, she suggested posting it here. I hope it fits in this subreddit. Bye! <laughs> Edits. Okay, first of all, thank you all for the kind comments and awards. I'm doing a lot better now. This happened a few years ago, and I haven't had to deal with Jake since. Secondly, I saw a few people getting confused about the plate part, thinking I was still in the house, so why would he text me? I had left for work by the time he'd gotten out of the shower, so he couldn't yell at me. Also, my mother was at work, so I didn't leave her with him. Don't worry, I edited this in my original post just to clear things up for people, just in case by some chance they don't see the edit. I hope this helps. <laughs> well, that was a roller coaster. Uh, Jake, very, uh, loving person, obviously. Lots of love to give, and, uh, frankly, it's, it's sad to see him done so dirty. This story's called, Using Me to Babysit Your Kids While You Cheat on Me? Look out. Okay, so throw away as I haven't told anyone about this. This happened last year. Harry and I had been together for three years. He had two kids, and as a result, we didn't want to rush moving in together. For the three months prior, almost every week on the days when Harry had his kids, he would have to work late and ask me to look after his kids for him. I'd pick them up from after school care, make them dinner, get them ready for bed, etc. There had also been a few times he had been offered an overnight shift in healthcare, and I had babysat then too and taken them to school the next morning. I was happy to help, as he seemed to need the extra cash and had borrowed money from me. Anyway, I was dutifully watching a kid's movie when my friend messaged me that she had seen him in a club kissing a woman. I said she must have been mistaken because he was at work, but she sent me some pics and sure enough, it was him. I was livid, but had to keep it inside for the kid's sake. I put them to bed as early as possible and tried to stay calm, waiting for him to come back. Then the message came that he had to work overnight. I tried calling him, no answer. And after a few tries, straight to voicemail. He had turned his phone off. This was the point where I lost it. But I couldn't leave or vent because of the kids. Uh, I'm not proud of what I did. I went through each room trying to create as much unnoticeable chaos as possible. I removed the most useful screwdriver from his toolbox, broke all the filaments in his spare bulbs, swapped the washing and dishwashing powder for a mixture of flour, sugar, and whatever else I could find. I filed one of his professional certificates, required for adults, in a folder he wouldn't look in. I put jam underneath the soles of his hiking boots, started unpicking the buttons on a few of his shirts, same with the flies on his favorite pairs of pants. I changed his Wi-Fi and router passwords. I guess you get the idea. My final act at 6 a.m., just before I had to wake the kids up and act like everything was fine, was to disable the chip in his passport and slightly deface it so it might look like it was forged. I guess Brovid has made that redundant. Anyway, I left things a few days and avoided too much contact. Then I messaged him saying I didn't really feel I was invested in this relationship anymore and I was sorry and hoped he had a nice life. He tried calling numerous times. I blocked him everywhere. Haven't heard from him since. Uh, well that's good. That's a really, really messed up thing to do, if I'm being honest. Holy crap. Like, that guy has, like, not just a small heart, but, like, a negative heart. His heart's got negative mass, if that even is possible. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.